Allow me to begin with a confession, one that most likely resonates with the majority of my audience here. I have not taken a photograph with a real camera for years. Sure, I own a Canon, or a Nikon, or perhaps even a Polaroid, but to be honest, the only thing the lens of that camera has seen in the last decade is dust. Like many of you, I prefer, or simply defer to, the convenience of my cell phone for capturing the world around me. That is not to say that my appreciation of photography is decidedly basic. I much prefer to examine an envelope of glossy prints than to click through an album of digital photos on Facebook. I relish the sensory experience of interacting with the still frame memory via my eyes and hands and versus my eyes and mouse. And despite my amateur photo status as a photographer, I do feel semi-confident in my abilities as a photography critic. Hashtag, my selfie is better than your selfie. <laughs> I begin with the discussion of photography if only to introduce what I believe is a strong metaphor for the course most of us in this room have chosen for our graduate studies. Reflecting in the last few months on my recently completed experience in the Loyola, Loyola Liberal Studies program, I sought proof for the success of the course of study. I considered the products that emerged from my engagement with the myriad topics of the program, the fruits of my labor per se. The obvious artifact is one's marks, the something point something that one can quote to one's friends unless one's friends are enrolled in numerous high school AP classes. Grades are meaningful to some and meaningless to most, especially those of us who cannot choose whether or not we extend our studies and thus simply want it all to be over so that we can get back to our jobs and make that money. If not grades, I ask myself, how about social connections, the almighty network? Oh sure, I remain connected to several peers from my extended time at Loyola. But do I truly feel accomplished based on the handful of Facebook messages the two texts and the occasional waves I recorded this year? No, and I wish that were not so. As minor disappointment sets in, I recall the assumed mark of success for an individual enrolled in a general studies program, world-class team trivia player. <laughs> Had the mini trophies, the restaurant vouchers, and the engorged brain not been so heavy a load, I would have lugged them up here to exhibit them to you. You too can eat for free at your local watering hole if you just abandon your families a few nights each week and apply both practically and superficially what it took you so long to master in room 203 of the Columbia campus. <laughs> at this point in my meditation period, lapse becomes lamentation, and I start to wonder if perhaps I wasted my time, money, and critical thinking on a concentration in liberal studies. I completely forget everything I learned from Dr. Snow during the We Are What We Eat course and I shovel all manner of genetically modified foods into my undiscerning mouth. <laughs> my eyelids descend, and I watch the completed courses swipe past my eyes as if they were being displayed through an old school slide projector. Sex and modernity, autobiographical solar performance, ideas have consequences, writing a life, manhood in the making, American film classics. I open my eyes and I immediately discover the product, the impact, the value for which I had been searching. It's the view. Having attended for my undergraduate studies a private Christian college named for the theologian John Calvin, I am more than familiar with the term worldview. I truly believe, like Calvin and his contemporaries, that each person has a perspective on the world, a structure of fundamental beliefs that provide answers to the deepest questions. Granted, some worldviews are borrowed, thanks mom and dad. Some are formed through examination and analysis of rich texts and some are crafted through trials and tribulation. No matter how they are developed, worldviews are often deeply personal and staunchly defended. One need only consider the rancor and conflict commonly associated with political and religious debate. Yet one thing worldviews are not is static. Clearly some individuals, maybe even some of our favorite family members, prevent their worldviews from expanding or evolving or even seeing the light of day, or better yet, a microscope. This does not mean that the worldview is incapable of alteration or transformation. It simply implies, at least in my opinion, that the individual with that worldview has a limited perspective. To return to the metaphor of photography, the photographer in this case has a camera, but he or she is using the wrong lens. Where liberal studies has served me, and I imagine many others, is in the availability of and access to different lenses. Tools that have ultimately expanded my view of the world and have, when the negatives developed, produced exquisitely dynamic photographs. Substituting camera for worldview, it is important to recognize that all individuals capture the world around them with particular equipment. I like to think that my particular equipment is not an iPhone 5, but then again, the editing capabilities are pretty solid. 
<laughs> recognizing that each human being is packing a Canon, Nikon, or Fuji film allows us to recognize the perceptive and creative capacity of our fellow photographers. It also provides the context or background for an individual's personal expression, his or her output. Stop for a moment and imagine who of the people in your social circle possesses a Polaroid and can seemingly develop his or her expression without much careful consideration or reflection. In my case, my camera is of the Reform Christian brand, and it contains particular components or features associated with middle-class white values, bilingualism, education, mental illness, chaotic family dynamics, and constant movement. I could certainly trade in my camera for another type or make. I hear the agnostic brand's a little suspect. But I imagine that many of the features would remain the same due to my particular life experiences and cultural background. Like it or not, all cameras perform the same function. They take photographs, and they consequently display the brilliance of the world around us, whether that world was created by God, the Big Bang, or the flying spaghetti monster. We are all capable, and in fact, called to this task. We all know, and perhaps were reminded by my introduction, that just because we have the equipment to take a photograph does not mean that our pro proofs are of premium quality. On the one hand, a state-of-the-art Canon 5D Mark III DSLR cannot redeem a fellow traveler's attempt at capturing the sweet moment between you and your significant other. On the other hand, a simple recall of one of the more memorable ad campaigns of 2015, the Apple-sponsored Shot on iPhone 6 campaign, demonstrates that even devices primarily intended for uses other than photography can produce stellar still frames. I posit that it is not the camera, but instead the lens that one is using that makes the photograph. And it is the lenses of liberal studies that have helped me to produce the most amazing depictions of the beauty around me. As an educator working in the public school system of Maryland, I am required at some point in my career to complete a master's program. Sure, this benefits me as well, as I receive a pay raise as a result of the continuing education credits, but the decision to pursue a graduate degree is primarily based on necessity. Therefore, many educators choose what appears to be easiest and most sensible in terms of their master's attainment. They offer yet another education-related major. They select the online-based educational technology course, the hybrid pedagogical philosophy course, the cohort teaching literacy course. The course is characterized by efficiency, affordability, and familiarity. In essence, they choose a restrictive approach to photography. They select a focused lens that will result in a limited view of the world. Moreover, this approach requires the over and perhaps misuse of a particular component of the camera. It active activates the educator feature without applying it to a new context. Don't get me wrong, there is nothing inherently flawed with this path. Plenty of educators should hone their craft to better prepare their students for the future. Yet I would argue that this fine-tuned fashion is decidedly ineffective in preparing both the viewer and the photographer for rich engagement with the world. Rather than outfit one's camera with a lens that captures only one hyper-focused facet of one's surroundings, why not equip oneself with a variety of lenses that produce a range of images? Hence my decision to explore liberal studies as an option for my continuing education. Not only did I foresee the opportunity to engage with the world through diverse viewpoints, but I also recognized that the courses associated with liberal studies would afford me the prospect of inspecting and even refurbishing my camera. And four, nearly five challenging years later, I observed that both the instrument and the products of my photographic labors are more developed and dynamic than they were before I entered the program. Without a doubt, choosing a more holistic approach to my learning has expanded and enriched my photographs my perception and understanding of the world, which has in turn clarified and deepened my knowledge of my camera. Not only did participation in both the autobiographical solo performance and writing a life courses develop my skills as a writer and orator, but also my presence in both classes prompted reflection about the sometimes problematic but always significant role of faith in my life. In addition, spending time discussing the contributions of societal icons from the 1970s and 80s or scrutinizing the historical role of the United States on the global stage has heartened my advocacy of more thoughtful and fair foreign policy and has made me a more informed citizen. Finally, whether the source material was Lord of the Rings, Food Incorporated, Mary Poppins, I Rigoberta Manchu, or Stone Butch Blues, through my interaction with the varying characters in their respective stories, I have become a more thoughtful and empathetic human being. The wide lens of liberal studies showcases the big picture the societal trends, the systemic failings, the global scale. Replace that with the portrait lens of liberal studies and the faces come into view. Those of oppressed indigenous women and children in Guatemala, that of manic, trenchant, spalding gray, those of hopeful members of the LGBTQ community, and that of adventurous, high-flying Beryl Markham. 
and just when you think you've seen it all. The telephoto lens of liberal studies reveals the motivations, the underpinnings, the supposed rationale for what you've seen with the other lenses. Through this lens, the seemingly distant, imper imperceptible objects become just as clear and substantial as those situated right in front of your eyes. The value of liberal studies is not that any one of those lenses is available. The real benefit of liberal studies is that all of the lenses are incorporated into each and every one of the courses. Furthermore, the diversity of topics offered through the liberal studies program makes it necessary to vary the subjects of one's photographic efforts. As a result, the products that materialize from a liberal studies photo shoot are vibrant, complex, and meaningful, much like the world, and is not the purpose of our efforts to capture, convey, and continue the brilliance of creation. It is the final effort, the continuation of Earth's majesty, that has received limited attention in this promotion of a liberal arts education, yet it is definitively this responsibility that is most fundamental to our role as photographers. Additionally, it is what distinguishes the choice to pursue yet another degree in the education or business or health sectors from the decision to explore and enroll in a liberal studies program. While I have no doubt that a hospital would be better served by a nurse with additional nursing knowledge, or that a business would be more successful if it were run by executives better versed in business practices, or A107, my office, would be a more engaging place to learn if I became more pedagogically endowed. The impact would be restricted to the particular context associated with the acquired knowledge. With liberal studies, the photographs that I develop can be shared with others in order to improve the conditions of the world beyond the particular venue in which I am sharing them. Using the information I acquired from the course Another America, Central America, I can educate my high school students about the rocky relationship that has existed for decades between our country and those belonging to the region we label Latin America with the hope that their future relationships with Mexicans, Hondurans, Bolivians, etc. are characterized by comprehension and compassion and not by insensitivity, insolence, and insult. Or thinking even more generally, the skills and strengths that one acquires from the liberal studies program, interacting inter energetically and creatively with the changing world, cultivating analytical and communication abilities, and developing and expanding a commitment to others, these can be modeled for others, not only to develop their academic or professional identities, but also to enhance their social, emotional, and perhaps spiritual selves. Speaking both personally and genuinely, my enhanced view of the world as a vis-a-vis -vis the lenses of liberal studies has made me into a more creative and active agent in the world, a photographer whose craft has already begun to inspire other photographers. Thanks to the lens provided by Dr. Ward, I have not only been selected as a member of the board of directors for a regional organization, protecting, equipping, and advocating for the foreign born, but I've also recruited two high school students to serve on the board with me. Thanks to the lens provided by Dr. Snow, I have not only become more personally discerning about production and consumption of food and foods and beverages, but I have equipped and encouraged my students to apply the same critical lens to their dietary, dietary choices. In fact, they are presenting their photographic food diaries this very week. Thanks to the lens provided by Dr. Brew, I have become more curious, considerate, and compassionate about human sexuality and the ways in which society orders, enforces, and limits gender roles, leading to what I perceive as a safer and more reflective space in my classroom for students to explore, analyze, and celebrate their developing identities. Without having access to that particular lens, it is less likely that Coraline, an MTF transgender student in my Spanish class, would decide to spend her lunches asking about my identification as a feminist male-identified person. Thanks to the lens is provided by all of the professors in the liberal studies program, my being, my work, and now my impact is at times personal, at times public, at times panoramic, but always powerful. Thank you.